Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with random reviews from the overflow room. Yes. Voila. There we have it. And we are still on Sibelius. Endless quantities of Sibelius. This is number nine in our Sibelius thing. And we have the bin over here. And I think we've got, well, maybe a couple more. One or two more in the in the world of Sibelius. Maybe one more we can finish it up if we're lucky. But in any case, uh, here's the here's the pile, a large pile of Sibelius stuff. And let's get right to it, shall we? Well, more in the bis edition, the complete edition of Sibelius stuff. We have the wood nymph, the wonderful wood nymph, a lonely ski trail, Swan White. On um, the complete incidental music, it looks very complete. Um, and more wood nymphs. Well, there's two wood nymphs. There's the tone poem that was recently discovered. That's the big discovery of the Bis edition. Really a wonderful, wonderful work. I mean, complete, beautiful, finished. It was his Opus 15. He simply never revised it or did anything about it. And then there's a revised version, also Opus 15, which is a melodrama for narrator and, and piano and things like that, which is not as much fun. Let's let's not kid ourselves. Who cares about the poem? We just want to hear the hairy, screamy, terrifying orchestral work. Um, and then and then okay, so that's this. Yeah, right. With Lottie and those people. Then we've got this thing, um, or the orchestral songs, including Luanatar and the Rapid Riders' Brides, which is really cool and beautiful. Um, this is with the Gothenburg Symphony under Jorma Panula with Marianne Hegender and Jorma Hünnenen, who sings all that Finnish stuff. Uh, wonderful performances, very good performances. And I really, uh, the music is just so beautiful. It really is. It's nifty. These orchestral songs are gorgeous. They deserve more attention than they get. Oh, look, it's, it's Bernstein in his like last Sibelius recordings on Deutsche Grammophon. You have Symphony Number no. 1, you have his controversial Elgar Enigma variations, which I like because it annoyed the orchestra. And the Sibelius Number no. 2, which is just endlessly distended and ridiculous, along with the Britain Forcey interludes. And Symphonies 5 and 7, which are just long and slow and dull and heavy. But the Vienna Philharmonic, some people love them. The people who love them are out of their mind. I, I You know, late Bernstein, he could be great. First Symphony was thrilling. I saw that one live at Carnegie Hall, and it was also very, very good. But the rest of them are just not, not a patch on his first performances. Not at all. So that's all we need to know about that. Then we've got this thing, Symphony Number no. 7 and Kullervo. Oh, God. This is Colin Davis's horrifying LSO performance. Or performance. They have a couple in there, yes. This is just, this is, these are just slow, heavy, 22 minutes and 51 seconds for the seventh. Okay, that's not ridiculous, but it's not exactly wonderful. And you've got Rakastava and Ansaga, and the Kullervo is endless. Just slow and heavy. And he remade it with the LSO on their own label, and it was wonderful. It was fresh and lively and exciting. And, and I, I, why did I keep this? God only knows. I have no clue. Uh, let's see. Sibelius is two and seven. Sibelius two and seven with Ormandy is mono. Not mono. These are his early his stereo remakes. Pardon me. He redid these on RCA, but these are the earlier Columbia stereos. There we go. I've got it. And these are fun. These are beautiful performances. They really are. They're just lovely. Symphony number no. seven is actually also a little on the slowish side, but I have to say it has ten times more character than Colin Davis has put into it. I mean that. Wonderful interlude with the violins are going, yada, um, ba, da, da. I mean, goodness gracious. He didn't redo that on his remake either, but it was fun while it lasted. Uh, Charles McCarris in the LSO, The Swan of Twinella in Symphony No. 2. It's McCarris. It's, it's excellent. It's lively. It's fresh. It's music, musicianly. It's exciting where it needs to be. Uh, it, it's simply beautiful. This is LSO Classic Masterpieces on IMP Classics, a product of Pickwick Group. Mm -hmm. Yes, Pickwick Group. So yeah, that's that's a keeper for sure. Uh, and then we have Symphonies Numbers 2 and the Karelia Suite, the Vals Triste, the Prague Radio Symphony under Vladimir Volek. This is surprisingly good. And Volek, when he wanted to be, he could be like ridiculously rigid. But 
well, you know, he could also be very, very exciting. And this is him in exciting mode. It really is. Uh, this was fun to hear. Uh, a real novelty to hear these things coming out of, you know, the Czech lands. And so what the hell, you know? Sibelius met Dvorak. They had a conversation. You know, Dvorak said, I wrote too much music. So they said, oh, no, master, of course not. And, and then Sibelius went on to write too much music. So there you go. I guess he was serious. Symphonies, one in five with Yoel Levy in the Atlanta Symphony. Nobody's first choices for either symphony, but I got, you know, you, you collect Telarc for the Sonics. And Levy was, was a very good conductor, a disciplined conductor, somewhat emotionally cool. Um, he's probably better in the fifth than he is in the first, I think, maybe, possibly. But uh, they're, they're beautifully performed and beautifully recorded. And every so often I take them out and give them a listen and I enjoy them when I do. Ugh. Here we go again. Colin Davis, London Symphony, one and seven, one and four. These were all boxed up, by the way. I kept this one for a reason because this was the best of that cycle. It really was. The fourth is very dark and brooding um, and effective, and the first isn't bad. I mean, it really wasn't, but none of these were as good as Colin Davis's Boston Symphony first cycle or his LSO remakes. So, you know, I guess I just have it because. Then we've got Symphonies 1 and 2, Finlandia, the Violin Concerto, Valstris, the Karelia Suite, with Leopold Stokowski in the first symphony, Thomas Sch Schiffers, I think it's Schiffers, um, in the second. Am I right? Yes. A nice performance of that, the Karelia Suite with Ormandy, um, and he also does the Valstris, Finlandia with Richard Hickox, the Violin Concerto with Francis Scotti and Leonard Bernstein, and the Swan of Twinello with Stokowski, too. So it's a, a, a duo grab bag. And I got it because of all the other things you can't get elsewhere, particularly the second symphony with Shippers, which was interesting. Uh, Kullervo with Berglund. And this is his Helsinki recording of that, the Helsinki Philharmonic. His first one was with Bournemouth, remember. And this one sounds really almost exactly the same. So, you know, I kept it. I kept it because I kept it. Uh, Charles Groves. Oh, this is fun. This is the Charles Groves Sibelius stuff. He was such a good conductor. And this is in the Charles Groves box, which came out, of course, on EMI. Um, you get the Spring Song. You get the Four Lemminkainen Legends, the Ro Romance Opus 42, the Dryad, the Dance Intermezzo, which you never hear, which is just charming and lovely. Pen and Echo, In Memoriam, the Canzonetta, Vals Romantique, the Sweet Mignon, the Sweet Champetre, and the Prelude and Suites from the Tempest and the Andante Festivo. All with the Royal Liverpool Phil. This is this came out, and this was really interesting, unusual Sibelius that you didn't hear every day. And the performances are typically Grovesian. That is that is musical and enjoyable, and and just there's always a sunniness to his music making, and in a good sense. I don't mean it's all like facile. I mean you just hear the joy, and you feel the joy. So yeah, I felt the joy. Oh, wow. Yes, Dvorak 9 and Sibelius 2 with Paul Perret in Detroit. Oh, I love these performances. They are quicker than hell. <laughs> it was so fast. The Sibelius, now here's the Sibelius 2, right? Eight minutes and 36 seconds for the first movement, 12 minutes and 40 seconds for the finale. You're in business. You can couple both symphonies on one disc, one very long disc. Actually, it's, it's uh, does it say how long it is? Yeah, I could add it all up, 74 minutes. Actually, you'd think it should be like more than that, right? Tells you something about how zippy he was. It's so much fun to hear those performances. Oh, Symphony 1 and 5. Number 1 is, is, is Ormandy in Philly, which is one of the great number 1s. He rescores a bit of it and adds like some extra harp parts. It's tremendous. Um, and the 5th with Bernstein, which is one of the reference recordings. Ah, I said it for the 5th. Um, and the Romance in C Major with the Cleveland Sinfonietta and Lewis Lane. A nice... A nice, just Sony Essential Classics release, um, you know, that I got because it was a nice Sony Essential Classics release. Oh, this is weird. Yeah, this is Symphonies and Tone Poems on Denon in the Classics Exposed series. I kept this because I wrote the notes for the whole series, so I might as well keep it. Um, it's Symphonies 1, 5, 2, and 7. Um, there's actually a whole cycle out, actually, with the Swan of Twinella and the Vols Triest with Akio Watanabe and the Japan Philharmonic. Some of these are quite good. They really are. And uh, the notes are just unbelievably marvelous. I think they're still by me, aren't they? I, I must have the other one here somewhere. Oh, the painting, too. The painting is, is a wood nymph. 
Remember the wood nymph? Well, that's her. That's what she looked like. Um, let me see if I if I have this here. Okay. Up, oh, David Hurwitz. Look at that. Yeah, I did write the notes. I should reread these at some point just to just to see what happens if they still make any sense. So there's that. Um, right. Okay. Oh, it's falling apart here. I've had this sitting here overflowing for way too long. And last but not least, ta-da! This is an interesting disc. The Czech Philharmonic under Gaetano de Logu and the Prague Symphony under Smetacek doing the Tempest Overture. The rest of it is the Fifth Symphony in the Swan of Tuanella with de Logu um, in the Symphony in the Swan. And this Fifth Symphony is a real sleeper. It's thrilling. Absolutely thrilling. The end of the first movement. Oh my God, it's as exciting as you'll ever hear it done. It's on sort of super fun collection with the little blue sticker there. And I don't know if it's still around. I doubt it. <laughs> but if you can get your hands on this Fifth Symphony, give it a listen. It doesn't sound like anybody else's. It really doesn't. Check Phil sounds great in that music. So there you are, my friends. More Sibelius. Keep on listening and take care.